Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the 2017 Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook. Now in its 700 page, third edition, and also the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. There are a lot of critters in the backcountry, and you have to worry about more than bears and the occasional irritable moose or elk if you're going to stay healthy. Some of the inhabitants of the forest are indeed much smaller, like the humble tick, but that tick can get you mighty sick. Although ticks are commonly thought of as insects, they're actually eight-legged and more related to scorpions and spiders. One species or another is found just about anywhere in the United States and Southern Canada, and a number of species seems to be extending their range over time. Although not as clearly associated with poor hygiene as lice, Ticks are often first detected when bathing. This means that failure to bathe, as might be the case in survival settings, might allow them to remain on the body and increase the chances of disease transmission. As many tick-borne illnesses are most treatable in the early stages, you should know how to quickly identify and deal with these conditions. Ticks bite humans and animals to obtain blood, a blood meal. Although the bite itself is not a major medical issue, ticks serve as vectors for many organisms to help them find hosts. Microbes that are like bacteria, viruses, parasites, and more. As examples, the American dog tick carries the microbe for Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And the black-legged tick, also known as the deer tick, carries the parasite that's responsible for Lyme disease. Various illnesses carried by ticks usually present to the medic similarly to the flu, and as such are often misdiagnosed even by trained medical professionals. How about that? Ticks don't jump like fleas do, and they don't fly like, well, flies. You might find ticks more happy in shaded wood piles, leaf piles, or tall grass. The larvae, the juveniles, like to live in leaf litter and they latch onto your lower leg as you pass by on the trail. Adults live in shrubs along trails, hence the name deer tick. They hang around game trails and these appear a little less likely to transmit disease than the larvae. The larvae are not much bigger than a pinhead, making them very difficult to spot. There are a number of different larval stages, each of which feeds only once and then progresses to the next stage. And all this happens over several days. Tick bites will first present as a small red bump. Now by itself, the bite doesn't represent disease of any sort, but about 20% will have the microbe that does cause some kind of illness, maybe Lyme disease. Acute Lyme disease is characterized by the onset of flu-like sy symptoms, like I mentioned, but they are often accompanied, not always, often accompanied by a ring-like rash that expands over time, actually looks like a bullseye. You can expect to see this anywhere from three to 30 days after the bite. The patient may or may not experience itchiness or pain here, but they may have symptoms like fever, chills, head and body aches, fatigue, and sometimes nausea and vomiting, sometimes, sometimes basically what you're seeing with the flu. Of course, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you're going to spend the day in the backcountry, you should be taking some precautions. Don't leave skin exposed below the knee. Wear thick socks and, and tuck your pants into them. Wear hot top boots. Walk in the center of trails. Don't rub against the bushes that these ticks like to hang out on. Use insect repellents like DEET on skin and apply permethrin 0.5% insecticide on clothing. Now, although permethrin deactivates quickly on skin, it can last several weeks on clothing if enough is used to moisten the fabric then allowed to dry. Permethrin is thought to even withstand laundering if it's applied correctly. A natural alternative to DEET for the skin is citronella, which can be cultivated in some warmer areas. We can grow it down here. With citronella, simply rub the leaves on the skin and repeat throughout the day. Another natural product thought to be effective is lemon eucalyptus oil that is EPA approved. 
Ticks sometimes don't latch onto your skin for a few hours, so showering or bathing right after a wilderness outing might simply wash them off and deal with the issue. Examine children and pets especially after a day outdoors, especially check near skin folds. Now it's important to know that your risk of tick-borne illnesses increases the longer it feeds on you. Therefore, it makes sense to remove the tick as soon as you possibly can. Using a fine set of tweezers, grab it as close to the skin as possible, pull the tick straight up to remove it. And if you can do that, then you will remove it intact. If removed at an angle or twisted, the mouth parts may remain in the skin. And this causes an inflammation at the site, but still is better than leaving the entire tick there. Besides tweezers, a number of products are commercially available, all sorts of gimmicky stuff to remove ticks. A lot of them work just fine. Some suggest using unwaxed dental floss to loop under the tick, then tighten to lift it off the body. Afterwards, make sure you wash the area with soap and water and consider applying some antibiotic ointment. We're sure you've heard about other methods of tick removal, such as smothering it with petroleum jelly or lighting it on fire, for goodness sake. No method, however, is more effective than simply pulling it out. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you need a solid medical kit for that wilderness hike, hunting trip, or even long-term survival, check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.